going through that season leading up to it, trying to avoid injuries and everything else that goes along. And lo and behold, I was traveling to Italy, knowing and just believing that I was going now. You know, my squad number was number 12. I was going to be sub. I was quite pleased to be going, really pleased to be going because I'd been sent off two or three games from the back end of the season. Big kerfuffle with the FA taking a player who has to start the following season under suspension. I'd broken a little toe as well, which um, was a problem. Plus as well, I was carrying a, a hernia problem as well. So I had quarter zones put on either side of my groin just to get me through it. So I was happy to be there. And I just thought to myself, all I'll be doing was just jogging along the touchline, warming up. The one thing about um, um, Sir Bobby was that um, he was very, very loyal. The press ridiculed him because he never changed this, he didn't do this, but he was so loyal to his players and he, and he stuck with them through thick and thin. And he was right in a way because those players got him into a World Cup final, even though it was like by that much of a ball hitting the crossbar against Poland that we could have been out. And we played the first game against the Republic of Ireland, 1-0 up, we ended up drawing 1-1. That was a time when the press was again having a go at Bobby Robson. They really went against him badly. One, because of he had signed a pre-agreement for PF, um, or PSV to be their manager, which people do at a drop of a hat now, nothing said, but the press were like virtually calling him a traitor for what he was doing. He was letting everyone down. But then, so the next game was against Holland, where we couldn't afford to lose. And he completely then changed it to a three at the back. I took the place of Gary Stevens and he put me as a wing back. And as much as I was a full back up until 1985, I had never played wing back in my life. Never. And, and he put me there and he had Stuart Pearce on the other side playing in the same as a wing back on the left. But he'd done it more because of the Dutch, you know, Hullet, you know, Van Basten. Their strength was which is a big, which is massive in the game now, was, was the midfield and ball retention, movement, passing, triangles, playing f back, forward, through, and he wanted to close the space down. So he wanted me and Stuart just to get in there and just close down the space in the middle. He didn't worry too much about the space in behind us because on one side was Mark Wright, who weren't, who weren't a slouch, and then there was then, then there was Des Walker, who was like rapid. No one, no one ever beat Des, and that's why he always had that song about him, about you never beat him. We drew nil-nil in a game that I'm going to say we could have won. We had two goals disallowed, but we played a lot better than we did in the first game. And then the next game was against Egypt, where we had to win. He names the team, he's going back to a back four, and he names me. Bobby Robson was the loyalest man I've ever known. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, if his mum asked for a cap, he wouldn't have given her a cap, you had to earn it. But he left out Gary Stevens and kept me at right back, which I could see upset Gary Stevens has every right to, because he'd been through everything and all of a sudden he made a change. And maybe Bobby Robson, everything about him, he doesn't believe in sentiment when it comes to getting results. And we end up winning one nil. <coughs> and Mark Wright scored a winning goal with his head. For me, I was on a bit of a kind of, I was on a massive high and I hadn't sniffed anything at all. I, it was just something new. I was just somewhere which I was there. I couldn't, I was in like shock that I, what I was doing. People said to me, weren't you nervous? I said, I was, that, that hadn't come into it. That hadn't got to me yet nerves. I, everything else was, the adrenaline was flowing and I just didn't know where what was going on really. I was just virtually just sitting on the bus, turning up at the ground and just going out. But um, when we talk about what was going on, there was things going on at the hotel. There was, I mean, he was getting, you could, a few times, because my room at one point backed onto his when we was in Sardinia and I could hear him on the phone about things going on and it was, it was, it was poor, it was bad. And, but what he'd done, it got 22, 23 men, very, all very close together, because the one thing we all, we all said our bits about him, the boss, but we all loved him the way he was, because 
everyone wanted to do well for him because he had this way, and he might have come in in latter stages of being a manager, but he had this way that when you weren't doing any, when, you, when it wasn't going right, and when you had made a mistake, or when you, or you weren't listening to him, he had a way of saying it to you, and given the opportunity, i.e. half time, you want to go and pull it right, because you were letting him down. You didn't want to let him down. You know, it's a shame we never got to where we wanted to be, but even himself at his time, I'm sure that he was pleased where he went to, just for him, maybe to shove it back to all those ones who have been, what they've been saying before, and fair dues to a lot of them, is that they did, they, a lot of them apologise, if not personally, they did it by how, what, what they wrote about him. Every time someone mentions it, every time someone talks about it, every time it comes around, so far, no one has actually mentioned about, you know, calling, calling, um, calling me for um, the ball hitting me and, and calling it a, an own goal. I wish it was an own goal because that meant that my name would have been mentioned in there in the score, underneath the score. But they gave the goal to Bremer because they said it was on target. But no one's ever going to know because I think I was that close to him because that was my job to close him down. I, no, I don't think anyone really knew if it was on target. But he got given the goal. It always, it always gets mentioned. It, it always sits there. At the time that the fact of it was just, you know, it was just somebody who was brave enough to take a penalty, but weren't fortunate enough for it to go in the net. My side of it, I'm speaking. Others might have different because they'd been around. Some of them had been. Some of the players had been to Mexico with Sir Bobby, and and there was unfortunate there what happened there and it didn't work out for them when they were done really well. And then it comes around again and we get so close and I look at it and I think, I think it's, a, for me, it was an incredible achievement because in 1987, I was playing in the third division with a team that just got, sorry, with a team that just got relegated. So um, it wasn't great up until I left and all of a sudden I play one season, <coughs> play, play one season, get picked to represent my country second season going into a representing country again but this time in a world cup and i must say queens park rangers fans live off the back of it they absolutely love it and you know it, it helped my status with them as well that i was their player everyone talks about me and associates me with manchester united are playing for england they'll come out and someone will shout them down and saying that i was a queens park rangers player and it makes me feel for that as well that i've done it while i was there <clears throat> and the fact of where I, you know, where I started my football and the way it built along. We all, we all love to go from Z to A, but sometimes you have to have that bit in between just so you can understand that when you do go back the other way, what you're going into so you can respect where you come from. Mm -hmm.